In this video, I will analyze Akira Kurosawa's 1962 film Sanjuro through the writings of Sun Tzu and his book The Art of War. Thanks for watching this video and please subscribe and leave a like at the end. Sanjuro is told in two parts. In the beginning, Sanjuro acts as teacher to nine young samurais. The first lesson he teaches them is to not judge a book by its cover. The young samurais are fed up with government corruption and take a petition to weed out wrongdoing to their chamberlain. But when this chamberlain, who happens to be ugly, rejects their petition, they go to the superintendent whose good looks make him seem truthful. He instructs all of them to wait for him at a local shrine. Luckily, Sanjuro happens to be sleeping at the shrine and overhears them. He warns the young men that the superintendent is setting a trap to kill them all. At first, they don't believe him because his socks are full of holes and he looks like a beggar. He tells them to take a peek out the window and when they do, they see men with swords surrounding the place. Sanjuro gets them out of this jam by trickery and decides to help them rescue the Chamberlain, his wife and daughter who have been kidnapped by the superintendent. The second aspect of the film's plot involves Sanjuro becoming a student to a wise, soft-spoken woman who teaches him how to conquer his enemies and even make those enemies allies without drawing his sword. March. To smoke out the Chamberlain supporters who remain anonymous, the superintendent comes up with a plan to use the Chamberlain's empty palanquin as bait. The samurais will take the bait by believing they are rescuing their Chamberlain and be caught. As planned, the samurais see the empty palanquins and prepare to rescue their Chamberlain. Again, Sanjuro is with them and they ignore his warning. He warns them again. They tell him to be quiet and at this precise moment a large number of guards arrive on horseback to assist the superintendent. The guards are friends of the superintendent and came to escort the palanquins through the woods. Early in the film, Sanjuro and the young samurais rescue the Chamberlain's daughter and wife and take one of Moroto's guards as hostage. When the guard refuses to tell them where the superintendent is hiding the Chamberlain, Sanjuro orders the samurais to kill the guard. The Chamberlain's wife, however, tells Sanjuro that he mustn't kill the guard. They detain the guard in a closet at Izaki's house. After being saved again by Sanjuro, the young samurais return to the house and find the guard out of the closet, eating, drinking sake, and wearing Izaki's best kimono. The old woman let him out of the closet, fed him, and gave him Izaki's kimono. The guard could have easily escaped before the samurais returned, but he stayed their prisoner because the old woman was kind to him and trusted him. Prior to being captured, the guard had heard stories about how cruel the young samurais were and found those stories to be false. After telling the samurais this, the guard finishes his food, his sake, and returns to the closet. The daughter of the kidnapped Chamberlain escapes when the guards send her out to bring them more sake. 
Sanjiro tells the samurai to let the girl take Saki to the guards and get them nice and drunk. This will make it much easier to rescue the girl and her mother. Sanjiro's outward appearance is as a peasant and a beggar whose social status and physical appearance cause the samurais to devalue his character and intelligence. The first weakness the samurais must overcome is the falsehood of outer appearances. They disbelieve their chamberlain who is ugly and trust the superintendent who is pleasant looking. Sanjuro reminds the samurais of the chamberlain's warning. The worst one is beyond your imagination. Referring to people like the superintendent whose outward appearance is deceptive. Sanjuro tells the samurais that the superintendent plans to kill the chamberlain soon and that they should stir up public concern over the chamberlain's whereabouts. But before the samurai can act on this advice, the superintendent posts a public notice detailing the chamberlain's crimes, which they are actually framing him for. The notice warns the public not to let the chamberlain's supporters agitate them. By the superintendent remaining quiet, Sanjuro and the young samurais can't make a move without exposing themselves, but Sanjuro comes up with a counter move. The superintendent doesn't know their true numbers and that there are only nine samurais, ten including himself. Sanjuro, acting as a double agent, warns Muroto that the chamberlain supporters number 130 men. The samurais discover that the chamberlain is being held next door to Izaki's house. Sanjuro goes next door to Kurofuji's mansion to tell Muroto that the chamberlain's supporters are at Komyo Temple. He happened to be on the second floor of the temple and the supporters are using the temple as their hideout. Muroto and his guards leave, but Sanjuro stays behind claiming to be hungry. Once the mansion is empty, he goes out to the garden and gathers camellias to send down the stream to the samurais. This is the signal to come rescue the chamberlain. Moroto doubles back and catches Sanjuro red-handed. Then, more bad news. Takabayashi runs in to tell Moroto that Sanjuro lied about Komyo Temple. Earlier, Sanjuro told Muroto he had witnessed the Chamberlain supporters from the second floor of the temple. The temple has no second floor. Muroto is pissed. He has Sanjuro tied up and rushes off to bring back Kukui and their army to help guard the mansion. Takabayashi and Kukui are left with Sanjiro who laughs and warns them that the Chamberlain supporters will storm the mansion and kill them if they don't see any camellias coming down the stream. Takabayashi and Kukui doubt Sanjiro's story until Takabayashi peeks over the wall and sees a samurai by the stream waiting. The door behind the samurai is jam-packed with samurais. The old man goes back and verifies Sanjiro's story. Sanjiro offers them a deal. He'll give them the signal for 50 pieces of gold. They agree and he tells them not to send red camellias downstream. Red camellias mean attack. Instead, he instructs the old men to send white camellias downstream. White camellias mean stop. No camellias mean he's in trouble. Kukui and Takabayashi dump as many white camellias as they can into the stream. In moments, Ikari and his fellow samurais storm the mansion, rescuing both Sanjiro and the Chamberlain. In this example, 
Sanjiro plays on the fears of Kukui and Takabayashi that an army will storm the mansion if they don't get a signal. The superintendent deceives the young samurais by one being physically attractive since beauty is generally associated with virtue and two, making the samurais believe that he sympathizes with their petition after the chamberlain, who is very ugly, a characteristic generally associated with evil, turns down their petition to weed out corruption. Sanjuro's appearance is also deceptive. He begs for food, has holy socks, and wears raggedy clothes. In other words, his appearance stereotypes him as someone of little character, pride, organization, or intelligence. When the samurais offer him a bag of gold for saving their lives, he takes one gold piece and gives the bag of gold back to them. And when Moroto offers him a well-paying job, he turns it down even though he begs for food. Thanks for watching this video presentation and analysis of Akira Kurosawa's film Sanjuro. And once again, I would appreciate if you would leave a like, comment, and if you would subscribe to this page for more videos such as this one. Thank you and I'll see you next time.